I'm like, a lot of expectancy what God's doing. And just through some like minor reflection, uh, it must take, you know, something of God to want to like reveal certain truths to us. You get me? And so God won't automatically just like reveal truths, like give revelation to his people. Because the Bible says that, you know, pearls are not for swines. And so which means God doesn't treat us as, as swines. Because he's given us like tremendous revelations and truth uh, about who he is, right? And so I understand with God that he's like everything is everything is like set up for there's something that he's setting up. And uh, how God works is that over a period of time he makes things clearer, but initially it's not clear. And so he starts out, he likes to work with like commands. They just tell you, do the following. Yeah, it isn't coming, eh? They tried, they tried, yeah. So I'll take that mic, there is another mic. It's there. So you disconnect me on, on this one, please, can I? Yeah, thanks so much. Thanks, you'll try it, eh? So, you know, for God to like reveal certain things, it really means, you know, that the Spirit of God has got some vested interest in us. There's something more that, although we definitely need God, right? 100% we need Him. But, at the same time, while we need Him, we really do need Him. Really, really. But, on the other side, is that He also, you know, He like really, he really needs us as well. Or else He would never, ever make a covenant with us. The only reason why he ends up coming with someone is, you know, there's some mutual, there's some mutual interest. And um, so God chooses to do that. And one thing, although some stuff won't manifest like immediately to you guys, but never ever forget the financial covenant that the Lord wishes to make with us. Or rather, he's rather made with us. For some, you will notice that you can't force it because the time is not... The time is not there. So you don't need to worry about it. Uh, the time will come. But just understand that. To try to like, um, what's the word to use? Try to imprint it somewhere. Even if you have, like, on your, on your phone or something. You know, like how you have a, what do you call this thing? You know, on your, on your phone, if you put your phone on, it says certain things or whatever the case may be. Like, you can have a photo of yourself from there. Like, how do you put a photo with eyelashes? The eyelashes are very long on your screensaver and things like that. So like how you do that? What you do is maybe just do like a thumbnail or whatever, what's up, type out something. Display message. Oh, thank you. And so on your on your screen of your phone, just have it there. Yeah? You just see it. And uh, it's one of the ways that the Lord moves. It's, it's like a memory. You don't forget things. You don't ever forget, like, you know, don't let things go out of your memory. Don't lose the memory of what God said. Uh, what I used to do, when God used to speak to me, now I don't do it so much. I'm actually really still doing it. Now I like to just depend on home because my memory has been developed. But before I would, like, go to notes, and whatever God says, one line I would type it in there. Now when I go back, I've got st some stuff that's stored here, like, from... Three years and stuff like that. And the beautiful part about, I don't know about other phones, but with these like phones, you get another one, it just automatically transfer. I'm sure the others do that as well. So they stay on there like forever. And so when I go back to like years ago, and when I read the things that the Spirit of God said, it's like a lot of them have happened. But when the Lord said it, it was so hard. It was so difficult to think that it would happen. So, if I go into like my ancient ones from like 2011, you find that most of what the Lord said has happened. What I'm saying there is, sometimes when God speaks initially, it seems like too far-fetched. But He still says it. So we must like record it and keep it somewhere. Because some of the things, they for now, some they for next year, some they for the following year, maybe some will only walk in 
into them like after three years or so, four years. But have those thoughts, so you don't lose memory of that. And uh, record your thoughts around what was said, just like record your thoughts in Kibber. Uh, that's important, especially what, like the things that God says. So some people that encourage like note taking. Note taking is good, but not to take notes about what the preacher's like, just saying, saying, saying. You take notes when you feel like a nudge of the spirit. So let's say I'm, 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 I'm teaching or preaching, and a word comes to you, you note that word down, because that's the voice of the spirit. That's the one you're going to record. Yeah? So, it's like with the music. Uh, like, now what happens is that uh, during the night, I would like have a dream or something. And I don't understand why. And a particular song would play the dream. I don't understand why the song is playing. Like, wow. So I can put it off. You see, I can just like put it off. Like, no, 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 no. But what I've learned with the Lord is uh, the pattern of the Spirit of God is established. If I take that song and I'll play it like the whole day and pick up like what the Spirit was trying to communicate. So when I do that, I pick up, oh, okay, okay. Then I put that song away and say, okay, I get what you were trying. So you follow me. And so these are like, um, what is it? Just like learning, it's learning the language of the Spirit. You get me? So the Spirit of God has a language which He tries to communicate all the time to us. To some, like to me, the main way He does is by impressions. And I've learned to, you know, understand Him in terms of obeying Him, not understand everything about Him, but just to know that hey, this is God. And I know for sure that this is God, not because of the movement. And when that's obeyed, you find that two, three months down the line, like we chose on its own. And uh, it's like God's word gets fulfilled like much, much, much quicker. Paul had a dream the other, when was it, about two weeks ago, and he said that it's a stupid dream, it's a nonsense dream. He just doesn't know why he had this dream. He said, I can't, it's a remember, it was a nonsense dream. And he said, like, hey, and I know that feeling, like, hey, 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 I'm not going to interpret this. Because it just doesn't make sense. And so we spoke about it and we got some clarity. Remember, what did it do to your spirit? Yeah, it lifted, it lifted him up. You see, it lifted him up. But he was willing to let it go. That is equivalent to Jesus coming and saying something. Imagine. Because he's, he's sending his message in a certain code for you to try to unwrap it. Uh, so the important thing, even the teaching and preaching is that you begin to hear the voice of the Spirit. That's where all teaching must lead to, is that you can hear God and uh, you can understand His communications. Because what God wants to do, well, hey, beloved, I'll tell you, is that we only in like just the small steps, this is preparation steps that we do. They like, I said to, I said to some of you guys last week, I said, that if you have the ability, if we teach on a certain topic, right, go onto YouTube and like search on the topic. Like type in, for example, Hannah. And you're teaching on Hannah on YouTube. And what you do is you listen to it and hear from the Spirit in terms of like the content of it. So it's not to show both about us, but Paul, uh, Paul said this. He said that the message that he teaches and preaches, he, didn't, he, he, he never get it from Peter and the rest of the apostles. He said it came directly from the Spirit of the Lord. And uh, the one time Peter even said that, hey, you know, Paul, the stuff that he speaks about is hard to comprehend, it's hard to get our, our head around what this guy is saying. So it's not that it's a competition or anything. But the quality of revelation is important for the development of your life in terms of fulfilling what God wants to do. So one of the ways to, to really appreciate like, the message that God has given is to like just take in and listen to the content of the message. And then you like compare it and say, hey, no, 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 okay, okay, yes, this. So we can appreciate what the Spirit of God is doing. Because by no means can I, you know, get to the bottom of what God is doing and stuff like that. It's, it's, 
it's just the Spirit of God that is doing it for a specific reason uh, to us. And we can see what God is going to do uh, in like the near, near future for you guys. And I'm actually like really, really, really looking forward to that. Yeah? I'm really looking forward because the, the perception that I get is that it looks like it will be like one more year that I will be like, you know, just like the, the voice one way, get it, the voice. Afterwards, it appears, it just depends on everybody's growth, that uh, there would be some type of uh, like junior pastor type of thing, but they will like take sort of like charge of the ministry to a certain degree and even, you know, share and stuff like that on Sunday, good weeks and stuff like that. So it's like, you know, like one more year or two. The beautiful part about that is this, is that whatever the Spirit of God like sets out and establishes, the person that comes after will like pick up from there. Imagine. I used to like follow a, a certain like a man of God who I thought was just phenomenal. Out of this world with like the revelation and things like that. Interestingly enough, when we started in the ministry, it's like the Spirit of God just put us, you know, to continue on that sort of quality of revelation. And it's like, you know, it just moves. So the same pattern holds true for us. Is that you guys, you have to see like a head. You have to see a head and know that God is serious. Because then your time becomes very important. The only thing you're going to do for the Spirit of God to move nicely in him is just get the Bible inside of you, nothing else. There's nothing else you need to do, beloved. Either you listen to it every single day, you write it, you do what you need, you just get the storyline, you understand it, um, that everything, you know, from Adam right up until, uh, who is it? John is like the lost character in the Bible. You understand the nations, who they represent, what this one represents, who's this nation, the kings of the north, the kings of the south, the heathen nations that are around the nation of Israel, the nations that are full of giants and what they represent. Can you see that? And so every nation like represents something in the Bible. But all of it that God has done in it is wrapped up just for us. Every event for us that's recorded in the Bible is a right there so that you can get to know God. There's no other reason that the Bible is there. I'm talking, there are other reasons, but the main reason is that you and I can get to know who this God is. And in no way must be misunderstanding. So there must be this clarity that we have about who God is. It must be clear. You know, we must like Really, really, you know, you know, this is God. This is how God works. So we saw that last week. We saw something. And I mean, how long have we been in Christianity? But we had never ever known certain truths when it comes to God answering prayer, like what Mr. Malini discussed. Did you know those truths? Is that, that you know, this is how it works? What we do know is what Jesus said, like, you know, don't retaliate, don't respond. But why? You know, we don't. And then we see how God wraps up the way we can get prayer answered from the Bible. Imagine that you welcome persecution because the persecution creates intensity. Intensity, when it builds up to a certain place, it's like the bowl in heaven has to tip over. God is God. It's impossible for God not to answer. Imagine. So we enter in a time where every single prayer of ours, it should be, it should be answered. We enter in a time where we know now is the time to come on God. Like God, you have to do this. You just have to. Then why won't you do it, God? Imagine. So these are like, you know, the things that God is sort of bringing to you guys. Now you would ask yourself, why must God do this, Kenneth? Why is God doing this, Paul? Why must he do it? I mean, for, for what reason? What does, you know, why would God want to do this? You know, sometimes with God, I can be a preacher and a pastor, but God can be quiet to me 
if the people that are attending church is the same. You know for how long? Five years, ten years, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty. No, I just don't talk. They die, they go to heaven, it's like, okay, it's done, you had your chance. The question actually is, why is God like opening up these truths? Why do you think? Does God open up? You see, the, the quality of revelation, one day you will see it. When the Lord opens up the door, and uh, what the Lord is doing with the ministry is, at a certain point, He put us on such a on such like a level. You know, it'll be it'll be hard to like sort of figure out. But God make it like an international ministry. And if God is being there, it's not then about one person. It's about all of us. It's about all of us. It's all of us coming into this knowledge and the revelation of who God is. The miracles ball, you'll see them, how they'll flow. You know, God must open up things nicely for us. So for us that are here and that are committed to God, there's certain things that we got to endeavor, you know, to fulfill with regard to our obedience. We have to by all means. It must never ever be like conjured. It must, mustn't be strained. Just go with the obedience that God is. But if the impressions come to you, then try and do it as quickly as possible. Then try and get it done as speedily as too quick in what God wants to do, yeah? So remember I spoke about for some, it's just about church attendance. Can you believe it? That the Lord only requires a person just to attend church and like where is their meetings? It might sound for others it's easy, but for another person it's the toughest thing. Just attend the Wednesday midweek service. And that's your obedience. It's equivalent to me spending hours with God. You just you're not opening the Bible, you don't even need to open the Bible. Just attend church. Do you think that the person would would you, do you think that everybody would just be able to carry that out? No. Not so. Uh, who can use an example? Because you know we we nice spoken people there. Yeah. Like Shay, nothing to Shay. But darling, please, the only thing you do is a certain meeting, just attend that meeting. Above all things, prioritize everything. So what happens is that the only thing that God will now do is that He'll bring obstacles to see if you can overcome those obstacles. It's like the early level. You know what I'm saying? Then automatically this thing is no more challenge. Like it's become a habit now. Ah, then the Lord says, okay. What I want you to do is just listen to the Bible. Now you can watch a movie, you can do this, you can do this, but listen to the Bible. That's your obedience, nothing else. Then it increases to, to things where the Lord starts speaking to you now. Now first, this is only for your life, Paul. It's got nothing to do with nobody else. But there comes a time when the Lord is speaking to you to get through the 250 or 100 other people. That's your obedience. Then it becomes a little bit scary. Because at that level, if a person hasn't, you know, but that's why we're not for this thing where a person must go out evangelizing immediately when they come to church. Because it's, no, 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 no. There's levels of obedience. If you yourself, you can't even perfect the church attendance, but you're talking to other people. Then when they come here, they're asking, where's Kenneth? Oh, but Kenneth just spoke to me in the week about church. Then they say, you know, but where's Kenneth? Why Kenneth's not here? Can you see? So the first level is this there. The other level is now where your obedience could be life and death to somebody else. You see that? So in, in my life, my obedience was always first just myself. But there comes a time when the Lord says, go into ministry. And your obedience or your disobedience rather, if you don't obey God, it's at the risk of people's lives. So imagine the Lord comes through, you start out, and he blesses. Then I say, ah no. Let me 
just have a breather for a year and gather myself. It's at the risk of your life, Paul. Can you see that? So God is going to work with us in stages. A person who fulfills disobedience, nah, nah. they fulfill disobedience. Nah. You see today, I passed the mic around. I don't know why I did it, but I've never done it. Because sometimes what happens, a person's obedience might just be to say one, one word or two words. But in you, you want to say it. But you think about what? The surroundings. Now, now, Gisha, why are you laughing? <laughs> you're making it obvious. <laughs> you, now you're making it obvious. Can you, can you imagine that by you just saying one line? That one liner could be the uh, Indian English. I'm really bad with English. I'm really Start reading more books, yeah, man. That one-liner, if you don't say it, could block the communication of God tonight. It could be a trip to heaven. It could be a vision. It could be a dream. But because you disobeyed, in saying one line, your evening is... It's just in darkness. Could it be that if you said that one line, something else would have changed? Can you see that? It's always with God about losing yourself. It's not about you. The moment you hold this mic and you think about yourself, then you know that, yeah. It doesn't matter. Now, if you're going to take that mic and talk for half an hour, then you're going to like, hey, stop it and stuff like that. Because I know sometimes when you're talking, it's like, the tempest, like you don't hear yourself, you just why not? But imagine Nisha, just by saying one thing, it can open up like a vault. It can be like a stopper that's on you, you know. In your in in the bathroom there can be, you know, so much water. But if we just take that small what do you call it? You know they have that thing that close the water? That small speech you just close it like that. Now, you never ever just open that switch. The water never ever gushes out. But there is like liters and liters and liters of water. It's just to say, hey, you know, I'm so happy with what God is doing. You might shed some tears. You might cry. Who cares about the tears? I don't care about the tears. You might not. I know Alicia wants to say something. I don't think I know what she wants to say. So, maybe I'll give her a second chance. Don't worry about yourself. Who are you, Lisha? Lisha is nobody. Who's Lisha? Post the mic to Lisha, please, Paul. You can cry. You can do every single thing. It's fine. Nobody cares about anything. Who cares? I'm the biggest kind. I'm crying on Sunday in front of everybody. In front of everybody, I'll cry. Take the mic to you. And say what you Yeah, you must cry. You must clear it out. And all of it. Yeah, we all been there. I cried in front of all the girls on my knees. I was like, <laughs> oh, 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 for what God is doing in my life. Um, for the two months, I've been going through a lot of pain. And at one point, I was ready to give up. I was even so miserable going through this pain. And keeps on all skin. Is it something that I did that go through with this pain? But lately I didn't understand, I don't understand. But something did happen. That I feel a bit lighter and there's like no more pain. I feel like a bit free. 
and uh, what I was going through. And I'm grateful that I didn't give up. I decided to put God first. And maybe He helped me instead of doing it on my own. I just want to thank the Lord for it. Thank you very much, Sister Lisha. How are you feeling? Are you even lighter? You got wings? <laughs> So uh, uh, I think Sister Nisha had a problem with your, look, with your legs, huh? And you need to see little times to check it out. And what they said, like, they couldn't find anything. So, and now it's gone, it's disappeared. I want all the stuff here. Yeah. I mean, the realms, eh? No. Uh, some, some brother told me. <laughs> said, yeah. So that's very important. That's good, Sister Nisha. You must be able to. Uh, because, like, like many of us, when you grow up being like the responsible person in the house, you would go and you take on God's responsibilities too. You see? And so, for God, like, that's a bad thing for God. God doesn't like that. You know, God doesn't like that you must, you must be the one that is, how can I say, uh, you're standing on God's word, but then you're using your strength. And God is like, okay, but what am I here for? What am I here for? So you can do all of this by yourself. So then, what is the need for me? God, I believe you, I love you, but I'm fighting this thing for you. I'm fighting. God's like, okay, I don't know. You think that pleases God? It doesn't please him one bit. The reality is that he's not pleased with that at all. And uh, we, uh, we're learning now to give it back to him. Hey, God, you take this thing. The battle is yours. I don't want to. You fight. You fight for me. For me, I'm going to chill. I'll be in your word, I'll stay in you, but you fight this thing. And you stay on it. God, you fight him for me. Yes, because I'm in your word. I'm doing what you told me to do. And I'm, and I'm like very expectant for you to do what you said you're going to do. Beautiful. You see, now the airplane pulled us. I guess he pulls like hungry tonight. But the airplane had to circle first. Because in my spirit, I can feel like, no, 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 don't go on to the teaching. It's like sucking. Don't worry, Ken. It's not tonight, Ken. Hey, not tonight, Ken. You know, like airplane sucking, they can't move forward. Because what's more important? In delivering the message, or are the people more important in the message? The people are more important. Yeah, Ken? The message is for the people. Yeah. So look at Lisha. Check, check how happy she's been. Look, check Lisha out there. Wow. <laughs> Now the church was full with single guys, all oh, dates, when we time for dates and stuff like that, we're like, oh, the glory of God. Okay, let's go to Daniel, Daniel 11, 31, or, or do Daniel 11, 32, right? This is the word when I was uh, coming down that came to me. And such as the weekly against the covenant, shall you cannot buy flat screens, but the people, this part here, yeah. but the people, the people, but the people, the people, that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. The people that know their God shall be strong and they'll do exploits. So, specifically, there, beloved, if a person does not know God, and if you inwardly you feel like, hey, no, 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 I'm not there. You must relax. Don't worry about works. Imagine, how they'll kill me for this one. Don't worry about working for God. Don't worry about anything. The main thing that the ministry wants to get to is us knowing God, right? That's like the core part of the ministry. We have to discover really who God is. And so that's what we're going to speak about tonight, right? So when we look at things and the teachings that we've been going through, there's something that's not a dream in my spirit. And um, we've got to see this, is that if God could, if God could like for one man, rather at first, before he had a wife, if God could go through a process of like seven days, just do things 
so that one man can know you. Hear me nicely, right? So, God makes Adam, right? You all know that in the beginning, He makes Adam. But before He makes Adam, it's like He constructs the whole earth for one person just to get to know Him. He does it for one person. That person is Adam. It goes through day number one, day number two, day number three, day number four, five, six, and seven, just so that Adam can be intimate with him and know exactly who he is. You see that? So he does that for one person who is Adam. All right, follow me. We're gonna get somewhere. When it comes. When it comes like to, to our lives, we've got to put ourselves in the position of Adam. That we are this like singular, singular person and uh, like we are like, you know, the apple of God's eye. And that when we seek in me or we develop in this relationship, We've got to be in a position not to see anybody else. So you don't see uh, this brother, you don't you just see yourself and God. And you develop that relation. Like there's nobody else on earth. You following me? So it's like everything that God like like speaks to us, it must be taken. Like there's nobody else that's around us. Because what happens sometimes is we begin to look around to the left, to the right. We see what God, God is doing here, what is doing there, what is doing here, and we forget about the promise that God has made to you as an individual. So you're asking, well, Pastor, how do you do that? It's very simple. Just like with Adam, you gotta like sort of like hold in on the things that God has said to you. This can't be my phone, it's impossible. Because nobody has this number. It's very impossible and this phone is off. Uh, you've got to like uh, find all the things that God has said to you. You with me? Like personally the things that God has spoken to you, either via dreams, alright? With its inward impressions where it comes from another person that has spoken to you, but you have a witness that this is the word of God. And you've got to grab these things and you've got to hold them above everything else. Is that this is like what we would call like your baby. You know, there's a lot of things to do in life, but you always focus on the development of what? You don't let it go. It doesn't matter what it is or how small it is, but that is your that is like your your point of reference in your relationship with God. You follow me? Man? It's like with Adam. What would be Adam's like point of reference in this entire relationship with God? You know, he's got the whole earth. He's got everything that's happening at his disposal. Must be running in the sea. I'm sure he's even, you know, swimming faster than the sharks in the sea. Imagine what a good time. You know the one time of the Lord? He took me in the realm of the spirit, right? And the speed at which you travel is phenomenal. You can do anything you want to do. When I say anything, it's like anything. You see a place like here, yeah, like in the air. You see a place. You can be in that place like, as you see, you can be there. Or you can even be there via like, you can even adjust your body like, you can adjust your body like to fly mode. And you want to go. But it works, it, it like works with thought. Like if your thought says, I want to fly there, you fly there. If your thought says, I want to be there, you just there. You're following me. It's so quick, but yet the experience can go like, in a time capsule of like one second, can be like 
30 minutes for the experience. You with me? Also, Adam, Adam can, Adam can like walk. He can like walk in the sea. He ain't gonna die. It's impossible to drown. He never, he can go in there. He can, you know, he can be with, he can do whatever he wants to do in this life. That's Adam. He can be here at one point, he can, he can be all over the show. Is the man enjoying himself? Of course he is. Day one, day two, there's some revelation about Adam, right? And that it, it, it appears like from the first day to the third day, it appears like there's a time period of like 30 years. That's by revelation. Because in parallel, like Jesus and stuff like coming into ministry, Jesus came on the third day into ministry, and he's like the last Adam, so parallel to Adam, it seems like day one and day two, there was a few years that were in there before Eve came. So it's not like he married Eve on day one, you know what I mean? It's like, he, you know, he never like married, he never, do you like making truth at the same time, a woman, I no, it was like he had to experience stuff. So Adam was enjoying a lot of things, but yet his relationship with God, was sort of referenced around what? What God said to him. And what did God say to him? He gave him the command about the tree of life and the tree of knowledge and good of evil. Everything was centered around that. Everything. Is the manager himself? Is he having fun? Is he the animal? He knows all these things. He must be calling a horse. This one, that one. You know, he must be really having a good time. Who else is on earth? Whoa, come on. The guy's having a ball. Alright? And it's likewise with you and I. There's so many things that we have fun with, you know. We enjoy friendships, we enjoy the brothers, we enjoy company, we rejoice. We do all of those things. Is it bad? It's not bad. Must we stop it? No, you don't stop it. But your relationship with God is a reference around what? What is your relationship with God reference around? With what? What God said to you. Can you still enjoy yourself? Can you still do whatever you want to do? Provided what? Yeah, the reference point is always priority. It's not that God is in the is in the mood of like making people have boring lives and stuff like that. But the thing that He said to Adam, the moment they neglect that word, it's all the fun and everything else is no longer there. And suddenly the tables are flipped and because they could not keep just imagine just to keep that word just be in church eh? you just gotta imagine for another person babe, make sure you do prayer meeting now for us it's not compulsory like for Candice and Tom I wouldn't say hey if you can't make it to the prayer meeting it's fine but I don't think for me it's part of the obedience to the Lord you follow me we have, we have like leaders if a leader can't make it to a brain meeting, no, then we've got problems. You get me? Now with the ladies that have like responsibilities and children, we say, no, 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 no. Take care of the house. You're fine. You're okay. You know what I'm saying? The church is not going to end because you can't pray. you got a husband at home. you got the kids there. We don't want a situation where the, the wife is out of Tuesday, out of church. Wednesday, church. Sunday, church. Oh, oh, oh. Half the week, you're coming home. You won't see your husband. He's working. Imagine. You don't see him coming back. What time you finish? Half past nine, maybe. You're coming home. It's like, guys sleeping. you in the morning. Waking up different times. You haven't seen each other. Like you're working in Sakunda. It's like you're out there. You get, like you're gone. But you, but you're in the same. So we say that. No, 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 no. We can't be unreasonable. You follow me? But to those that can make it, and as part of their obedience, for example, like Sister Lisha, you know what I'm saying? This is Tuesday, Wednesday is event, and Sundays she's around. Then the Lord says, "You need to start speaking a little bit more, my dear child." 
You need to start, you know, getting things out and just expressing yourself. You'd be surprised is that as teens and Asian friends, they never give me give you a compliment today. You can't even like hit us with a thank you. You know what? Thank you. Baby, you just say thank you. Say thank you. Never. We still waiting for the thank you. Yeah, you stand there. You know, just say it. Just, just say it. Oh, thanks. I appreciate the compliment. You get me? And so the Spirit of God begins to like move differently with small things in the lives of people. So your life, beloved, and my life is referenced around one thing. Whatever God has said, you obey it. You want to know, Paul, the things that God has spoken to me about. I never ever thought it would be music. I do not want to do it, but we did it. All right. The other point that we still got to do, me and Mr. Norris there, and with my son Joe, we've got to we do the main characters of the Bible and put them into cartoon format. Like how you see a cartoon. What, what knowledge do we have of cartoons? And create the storyline from the Bible and put it in a children's type of educational type of cartoon. We've got to do that. That's part of our obedience. What knowledge do we have of all this? The next thing I can feel is coming stronger and stronger is that the script for the movie needs to be written. We are not even talking about church stuff and preaching. When we come to the church, the Lord says that the ministry has got to move into signs and wonders. Oh my gosh, signs and wonders now. So that's another thing. Then, I think it's in the year 2020 or 2021, the Lord says it's important that uh, we move like financially into like billions for the work you have to do with regard to the city and stuff. Imagine, I'm only listening to a few that I can remember off, off the top of my head, but it's not all. What do you do? How do you, how do you move forward like this? I mean, what steps do you take? You know what to do? Every time he speaks, you obey that thing that he says. So for now he speaks with the music, so we obey that. It'll stop just now. Say, no, no, no more, go do this. And it'll be a hard one. But we just go and we obey. Can you see that? In that way, we enhance our relationship with the Lord because the reference point has always been carried out. Do you run and try to make everything happen? Do you run and try to make everything happen? No, you don't. It's not the way you work with God. You leave the things of God, you leave the... Uh, the financial freedom to God, say, God, that's yours. You said you're going to do it, right? This is my obedience. And now you do it. And you leave that to Him. And then you continue getting from Him on a daily basis. He'll do that, Peter. Yeah? Alright? So they, they are in the 1132. It says that we must know God in order, in order to be strong and do, uh, do exploits. It's compulsory that the right knowledge, the right revelation, of God, we have that of who God is. Without it, we on a you get me? We on a backward struggle. I wait for the spirit of God, okay? Don't worry, I'm just there's somewhere where we need to go, but I'm still circling on there. Is there anybody that would like to say anything else? I don't know, it's like this mic somehow. Hey Candace, your eyes is like, you know, just hold oh, yeah. Anyway, are you sure? I don't know why I'm like, you know, I don't know what's going on. Belinda, you alright? Says we're good. Tom is the dude, Tom. You want to say anything? Candace? You're fine. Selwyn? I'm forgetting about you. Selwyn? Sperera? Maybe you, Sperera. I think maybe you. They don't want to say anything. Yes, Sperera. Come, yeah. Come to say, just come, just come say something. <laughs> it's like there's a, how can I say, it's like there's a, it's like there's a, I don't know what it is. I don't know. I don't know, sir. Tell us about the dreams and stuff, I don't know. <laughs> Pick one dream, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. uh, Pick one dream or something. One that I can remember specifically is when um, I think uh, me and Pastor were praying 
and I was kneeling down on his uh, on his right hand side and uh, got down to pray and I sort of like my spirit came out of my body like in a in a Doctor Strange type of way like I was floating through like the space. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's sort of like one, uh, one of the ones that um, I remember specifically uh, and uh, as I came back, I don't know, it felt like, I don't know, it felt like time was warped somehow, like when I came back, almost like I came back into the past somehow, but I'm, I'm not sure about that part. Name, 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 name. No, just you just be free. Just be free. <laughs> just be free. Um, another dream. You don't have to talk about the dreams or anything else. Just, just you know, be free. Like what the Lord is saying and stuff. Okay. Uh, as well, what's been happening lately, I think, is uh, I've been seeing like little orbs of light every now and again uh, when I wake up in the morning because what I do is um, I'm doing my meditations uh, usually in the evening time and then I'm playing the words of Jesus as I sleep and when I wake up you know there's little flashes of light that I can see out the corner of my eye that sort of come in and out of focus uh, and it's been happening for like I think twice now it's happened uh, but it usually happens like early at, uh, in the morning when I wake up like in the early hours of the night and I heard about this other dream. Which <laughs> the guy who chased me around. I was in that one as well, yeah? I was in that one as well. Uh, in this one dream. Guys, look at me. Right, in this one dream. Um, I was being chased by the police. Um, they were smartly dressed like, like you know, your London police. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, our, our policemen are not uh, usually dressed like, you know, <laughs> standard is not. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm running in this dream and it's almost like, uh, it's, it's almost playful, you know. I don't feel like a villain, but you know, every the policemen are trying to get me and uh, I'm just thinking to myself, hey, I'm ducking and diving and everybody's trying to catch me. And I'm thinking to myself, hey, these guys, I'm not going to let them catch me until they become serious. And uh, as I say that, like a moment later, <laughs> a moment later, the, the guy in charge just uh, shouts to all the policemen that, hey, just taser this man. <laughs> so I can get this over it. <laughs> and immediately, as I, hear, as I hear him say that, you know, I just surrender. I'm like, hey, no. <laughs> You don't have to tase me, you can just take me here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so what does the... What does that mean? How does that mean that dream? Um, I think my, my interpretation of the dream is um, that the brothers were, you know, they, they're trying to they're trying to reprimand me in, in some way about something and uh, you know I wasn't taking them seriously until they you know sort of got serious about what they were doing and then you know I recognized and I surrendered like okay fine have it your way alright so who's the who's the other guy that now comes afterwards <coughs> which guy? Oh, this is Taze Taze who's the other guy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I assume it's you, Pastor. No way. But, but the weird thing is, the weird thing is, well, usually when I see Pastor in my dreams, it's, I can see that, hey, this is, you know, it's Pastor. But in this one, I didn't actually see you, you know, who was talking. So. Okay. It was a cop. Just the guy in charge of the, of the car. Oh, right? okay. Mm -hmm. oh, thanks, sir. Anything else? <laughs> I think that's more or less about it. Uh, thank you. I said to the guys because for some reason these guys, you know, they like for hours I'll see them talking, Candice. Like hours they talking. And I'm like, hey, Spurina's just trying to mock with them in my mind. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, hey, 
You know, so he's running a mock with him. He's just playing with words with him. And said, this is me. And I didn't say to Sarah, I said, I did this. But he's running a mock with you. It's words that he keeps on giving you and stuff like that. And he's a very intelligent person. Spirit is very intelligent. But for some reason, he like plays like, like the fool in some way. Yeah? Like, no, he like plays. And then they like all hang around him. They constantly, they bring all this stuff. and say, ah, you know, Spera, you need to just, you know, just sort him out quickly. And I'm saying, I'm going to, I said that I'm going to do it. And so he didn't know about that. In the dream, there's the brothers all oh, chasing him. Chase, <laughs> and to the T, to the T, to the T, that's exactly what I said, the taser here. Just taser here. And uh, uh, Spurera, that's, uh, that's very, uh, that's very important for you. Can you see that? Yes, sir. Because the dream is highlighting that, that, you know, while you are doing the meditations and stuff like that, you play. in your heart, you're giving these, it's like you, you, you can take this guy's time, like, off the church. Like from 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock, you can see him talking 3 hours. Like, what is going on with you, you know? And, but what do you think? And he's like, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Throwing it down different angles. And so, the dream is saying to you is that, you know, let us just continue. Can you see that? Or else we must just, you know, leave you now. We're just going to be, we're going to, yeah. <laughs> And you're gonna tease you now in this. So the dream is for you, alright. I'm trying to find a way, beloved, because there was a path that's supposed to go down, but it's, I can't seem to go down that path. The more I try to share on it, it's like I'm being stopped. Can you see that? And so, let me just get something sorted out here with the Daniel 11 scripture, right? Is there, is there a way that we can connect uh, the, uh, the thing to this here? Uh, because I can see it here, why? Hey, praise the Lord. Mm. So I to be led by the Spirit is another story, sister. Because I can't go, I can feel like I can't go forward. There's something that we need to, we need to focus yeah, on. Just to make your mind for a second. Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. We cool here. Yeah. When they when they find the all cylinders. Alright, so let's do this here. Alright, there we go. Iso. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. Shall they you're lucky tonight, you know why? Because you're gonna see exactly how I get the message. I don't want to show this. I just come and I'm like I've got everything to get right. So let's check this out. Let's make that bigger. We're going on to Daniel, right? Uh, Daniel. You all know who Daniel was in the Bible? Yes. So Daniel was a guy. There we can see this, I can feel the flow. Daniel was a guy. Uh, at the time in, in the nation of Israel, uh, the entire nation had lost a war. 
to a stronger king. That king, his name was Nebuchadnezzar. He was a heathen king. Alright, you know him, King Nebuchadnezzar? So the Bible says that God chose Nebuchadnezzar to become the ruler of the world, which included him ruling the nation of Israel. So understand, from the time of Abraham, what happens, right? So Abraham is one man, he has a son, as Isaac, then he has Jacob. So from Jacob, God starts the nation of Israel. How he starts it? He starts it through four ladies. You know the names of the ladies? It's Leah, it's Rachel, it's Bella, and it's Zillah. And through them, he has like 12 sons. So those 12 sons, they become like, each son becomes like a nation, like South Africa, you know? like for Reuben, and then Judah has his country. So picture that, there's 12 like different like plots of land that have become countries, but they, the descendants of Jacob, the, and they become the nation of Israel. So, when they become the nation of Israel, they go into the land of Canaan, and in Canaan, each one gets their inheritance, and they take out rivers inhabiting the land, and then they go out. So obviously, Amongst the entire nation, we talk about the nation, all 12, there's got to be someone that God chooses. So what God would do at that time, he would choose judges. The judges like a king, like a president. They would be the one that would judge the land according to God's law and they would have a prophet and a judge that would work together. So if you look like uh, one of the judges, very popular one, his name was Samson. So at that time, there was an enemy called the Philistines that were oppressing the nation of Israel and they couldn't like defeat them. So the Lord raised up uh, Samson and he became the judge of the land. You with me? There's others like Deborah, um, what's this guy's name? Othniel, I'm trying to think of these heavy names, Ehud. And so in the book of Judges, you would see all their names. So what happens is that they go through this entire period of Judges until they come to the guy by the name of Eli where we pick up the story with Hannah, etc. So Hannah's son Samuel, he became a judge of the land. So at, at, at Samuel's time, Samuel had children. So his sons were wicked. Those were the sons that would uh, uh, persuade the ladies when they come to do offerings in the temple. They would persuade them, you know, for them to sleep with the ladies. And so that's what they did. So the nation became very upset with regard to them. And they said, hey Samuel, you old now, and your sons, they're wicked. Who's going to rule after us? We want to have a king like any one of the other nations. So please, you know, we want to find a king. So Samuel went to God, I've said, oh God, so God says, Samuel, they've not rejected you, my friend. They have rejected you. Imagine, Samuel's sons were sinning. God says, they've not rejected you. They have rejected me. And then he gave him a king by the name of Saul. You remember? So Saul was in power until he, did, until he got to a place where he couldn't obey God. God said to him, go to this nation, the Amalekites, and completely obliterate them. Why are you doing that is because they are the ones that are trying to stop the Israelites from going to the promised land. They wanted the nation. So God had something, he said that nation must be completely like obliterated. So the chance came in Soros, the king, for him to go and do that. But when he went, he saved the king's life, he never you know, killed the king. Etc. And they took like the spoils of the Malachites, and then God said to Samuel, hey, "Go and tell Saul that the kingdom is read from him, because he disobeyed me." Which Samuel did. He took it away from him, and he said, "Now go to the house of Jesse and anoint uh, one of his sons, who was we came to know afterwards. His name was David. So he anoints David to be king. David is the one that God chose to be king, right? So when David's king, he's king over the entire nation eventually. So." After David comes his son Solomon. So Solomon as well, when Solomon was ruling, he got to a stage in his life where he taxed the people heavily. You know, it's like in, in South Africa, if, if they suddenly increase the tax to 60%, and you're like, hey, this burden is too much for us. So, by the time when Solomon dies, and his son, where Paul is taking over, what the elders of the land do is they come to Solomon on behalf of the people and say, listen, the people are complaining. Because Solomon put heavy taxes on us and we can't, you know, we begged him to survive with the tax that he has put us. Can't you know with the tax? So what Jeroboam did, he went, he listened to the elderly people and then he went to his buddies that he grew up with. He says, hey, these people want me to know with the tax that my father put on them. So his buddies said to him, hey, hey, tell them if Solomon taxed you 60%, I'll tax you 70%. 
So he went back and he said that to the elders. The elders said that to the people. Then he was like this, bro. Then God actually, God actually went and chose a guy by the name of Jeroboam, who was Solomon's servant. And he said, no, 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 you know, today Jeroboam, I'm giving you, uh, of the 12 tribes of Israel, I'm giving you 12. And for the sake of David, I'm only leaving two to Jeroboam. So the 10 became like the northern part of Israel, and the two at the bottom became the southern part of Israel. The ones at the bottom, they were Judah, and there's this one, and this one on the left. I can't, I'm trying to picture it on the map. But the ones, the ones at the top were all the other, the brothers of... No, there's another one. It's in my mind. Yeah. Now in Judah, now remember now in the nation of Israel, they've got a temple, right? They've come to one place to worship. Where is that? Is that north or is it south? It's south in Judah. So Judah was the place where they all came to worship. Jesus' ministry was in Judah. But what developed then is, don't you think now if the two like countries or if they separate, what do you think must come into play? A border, right? So they had a border. But now, the north has got one king, the south has got another king. The south is King Jeroboam, the north is King Jeroboam. Where are they, where are they, where are they going to go to worship God? They must come to the south. So what this guy Jeroboam does is, he doesn't do that. He goes into idol worship and he begins to form like a temple in the north, in Samaria and all that, they begin to build uh, their place of worship. So now, you've got the kings of the north and the kings of the south. The kings of the north, most of them go into idol worship. Almost all of them go into idol worship. Jeroboam, Ahab, Jezebel, ba I think it's Bashu, who else? So most of them, Jehu, all of them that in the north, most of them going to idol worship. Those in the south are the ones like uh, Hezekiah, Manasseh, uh, Josiah, Esa, Jehoshaphat. Those are all those in the south. But you find that how God works is where the weakness is, He puts the major prophets. So a guy like uh, Elijah and Elisha, where did they operate from? The north or the south? They were in the middle of wickedness. They were there with Ahab and Jezebel, etc. And so in the south they were prophets, and in the north they were prophets. You get me? So the story goes, right? so they continue. So the northern part of Israel eventually gets conquered by uh, is it the Assyrians, but they get conquered by somebody, right? So they go on. But the south still got the line of David, the seed of Abraham that's coming up until Christ. So what happens? They get to a point in time when they rebel against God. And then a nation comes to conquer them. That nation is Babylon. Alright. So Daniel was part of the nation when King Nebuchadnezzar came to capture them. And he was part of the royalty, like of the royal family and stuff like that. You following me? So that's the era that Daniel lived in. You follow me? So that's the story, the context behind Daniel. So now, when Nebuchadnezzar, like, you know, takes over from them, he looks uh, for people that can serve him. When you conquer a nation, you don't kill everybody. To kill everybody, who's going to work for you, Mr. Malina? You just go about killing. No! You need some people to work for you. Are you going to make your own people work for you? You don't watch that, uh, what's that, um, the jungle movie with the guys, I'm going to the name. Apocalypto. They're looking for sacrifices, where are they going? They're going out of their own country to find them, to bring them in. You're following me? So, that's the era that Daniel is like living in. Those are the conditions that he's in. He can't go serve God anyway. He can't, there's no temple to serve God. He can't say, wait, they don't have No, there's nothing. So, when Nebuchadnezzar takes him in, he's a nobody. 
He's got nothing. He owns nothing. He's a nobody. So it seems like something like uh, Heather and Penina is that when the persecution in life comes, because he must have been comfortable as well in the palace. He must have been relaxing, you know. But suddenly, when he finds that the whole nation now is taken over by a heathen king, it seems like soup him up. You know, like, you know, like, he kicks super and he decides, hey, let me really serve God here. You think he was so serious before? What do you think? You think Daniel was like, you know, it seems like this environment, you know, began to shake him up. And so now he devotes himself to God, etc. So when we pick up the story over here, then in, in Daniel there, is that the Bible says, they're that those that know their God, they'll be strong to do exploits. So here's the part that I want to take you that I want to take you guys to. So let's pick it up. Yeah, right. You see me there? So I'm gonna work online, shall we? So here we go. Yeah, right. So this is how we get revelation. So the part that the spirit is like really, it's like really, 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 like really stand out for me. Is that uh, is that part strong? So yes, go ahead, eleven thirty-two. Can you all see that? Can you see this part where the cursor is? It says, those that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. So you see the strong. I don't know what the strong is talking about. I really don't know. I got no idea. So there's an impression I pulled from the Spirit to look at this. So let's see it, right? So this is what we do. We click on it there and we search it through the Bible. And we find there, can you see there? There's 266 verses about this particular strong. See the first one. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand. So the translator uses the word laid hold. Take note of that. Can you see that? In the next one, it says, Arise, lift up the lamb and hold it in the hand. So there's an emphasis on the hold. You think that's a tight grip or a loose grip? Tight or loose grip? Tiger. Oh, I want to see when, when the bells start coming on, right? And Joseph put all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh, for the Egyptians saw every man his field because his famine prevailed. Famine, you think it was a weak famine or a strong famine? Prevailed, strong, right? Uh, I want to see. You see this one here? And one told Jacob and said, Behold, thy son Jesus cometh unto thee, and Israel strengthened himself. Now what I do, I know where to get my revelations from. It's from the difficult books. So when I do it, I start out here in the back by these guys here. Now I've never, ever, this is like, you fresh, this is like fresh. I suppose to it over, my phone died. I went next door for the computer, it weren't there, because I remember it was here, nothing was there. And this impression only came to me late in the day. So see this in Malachi 3 30. Your words have been stout against me, said the Lord. Yet you say, What have you? Now the emphasis here has been stout. Is stout firm? All right. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great term from the Lord shall be among them, and they shall lay hold everyone. So now that I see that there's very similar words, what I want to do, I want to browse through to see if there's any other different words they have not seen. So I'm seeing strong. How's that one? I like this one, Polas. Irritated. Oh, oh. Yeah. I see why the Lord let me down this path. Hold it, strengthen. So sometimes, Tom, when I'm preparing a message, or not a message, when, when I'm giving revelation to know God, because I don't prepare for the message, there's like 2,000 verses I've got to go through like this. So I'll go through it like this. this is I'll go through them. Two thousand. Two thousand million numbers. Yeah, it's only two hundred. We we'll make it strong. The ancient of God boys we were in the like cookers. Okay. That's a good word. I don't know what it means. I'm not gonna research that now. Strong. Strong, strong. Then you know what we do? This is what we do, right? So we go back. We go back to our Bible, yeah? Let's cancel that. We go back to our Bible, Paul, 
And yes, what I see, the Spirit of God trying to tell us. I want you guys to try to translate this for me. But the people that do know their God, give me some words from what you saw there, right? The people that do know their God, this translation that says, shall be strong. Stout is one of the words. What are the others, eh? Prevail. Prevail, yeah. There's another nice one that I saw, I love it. Retain. Retain, yeah. Hold oh, it. I'll show you, alright. So what I do now, I like her, uh, I replace the words here. And here's the one. Here's the one for you guys. Now imagine guys, you gotta understand the environment that Daniel found himself in as well, yeah? It was a very different environment. It was a heathen king. This guy was ruling and stuff like that. He came out of a lot of adversity, a lot of uh, testings, the lion's den, you name it, all of that stuff. And suddenly he's making, you know, these statements like this that's found in here. I like this one here. Yeah. See this? You see here? Yeah? See this one? Can you see that? Lay hold of. Hold of. Look at the spirit of God. I never planned this. Lay hold of what? You gotta be more specific because God is like very gentle in this situation. Be more specific than the covenant. Lay hold of your obedience. Lay, be more specific. Lay hold of what is spoken to you. You see that? You see the seriousness. It's simple, but look at the seriousness. And it's that this guy like Daniel. He's saying it was a nothing. It was a nobody. He's serving the king's quarters. He grew to become somebody. In Nebuchadnezzar's reign, his son's reign, and even after both their reigns were in a different kingdom. And he's saying this that those. Let's go back to it so we can see it nicely. That the people that do know their God, I want to see something here. Yeah. Oh my gosh. My gosh, they love it. I'm wondering. I'm like sucking around in this aeroplane. I'm like talking a little bit like in spirit, but I'm not like hearing everything. You see the words. Now, when you see all those words in there, what's happened in other parts of the Bible, they translated using those other words in different scriptures. Now, we're not going to go into it, but what we can do to strengthen it, we take those words and look at the environment it was used, and then we bring it back into context. See the See the one with, there's the one with acquaintance. Oh my gosh. Those that are acquainted with God. Those that comprehend who God is. Those who have that right information about who God is. Can you see all of that? Those who are cunning with who God is. Those who declare, who are diligent, how is that one? Those who can discern that it's not the devil that's doing this, it's God that's doing this. Which means your strength in God is left to what? Your comprehension of who God is. Your discernment to know that God is afflicting me and not the devil. 
brings a clarity to your spirit. That clarity to your spirit is like your spirit eating an energy ball and growing in a different dimension. It's bulking out and it's stretching out. You know how it's stretching out? Because your spirit now is not eat, it's like your body. You and I eat every day. Yet another person with a different diet, you can see, hey, this guy is eating something different. He's eating a lot of seeds during the day because his skin, you can see on his countenance, his muscles is maybe there, he's doing certain things. Why? Because of what? It's what's going into his body. So the same thing happens spiritually. When a person cannot discern out of God and Satan, what do you think it does to your spirit? It leaves you very, very weak. Because you, all the time, you say Satan. The more you say Satan, is like the more your spirit gets weak. It gets weaker. And it, all because why? You couldn't discern. Is God at work? Or is Satan at work? A weak man. I said to the preacher the other time, some ailment came upon me, right? A silly ailment. <coughs> so I tried to pray, but as I prayed, I could feel like you can't pray for this. Said, what? You cannot pray for this. So, uh, their counsel, they sent me to pharmacies. I hate pharmacies. I used the thing in the pharmacies. Guess what happened? It got worse. Fear starts coming now. I'm thinking of worst case scenarios. I must come and sit and preach in church. I said, Lord, this is you. I know it's you because I've not fulfilled a certain area of obedience. I know it's you. I did not pray about that thing. I went quickly off that medication. The moment I went off it and I discerned that God is afflicted me due to some disobedience of mine. Baba, I don't even know about that thing anymore. How did it happen? You know how? You discern first who it is, who's at work. Is it Satan or is it God? If you're with me? The other word that we'll see there. See some of the words that it uses the right. How is this one? Learned. Tell me something. But all with who God is. If there is a lack of the word of God, just a basic. You see, now it seems like we went through a brief history of the Bible. If your spirit lacks that, what do you think? You think you can go into a fullness of who God is? Because God is like He's, he's like separating Himself in all the books of the Bible. So sometimes we get excited because we discover God's finger. Oh, look how beautiful God's nails are. I love you. God, he only discovered his fingernails <laughs> in one little book of the Bible. And are they beautiful? Of course they're beautiful. Do we have the full picture? We don't have the full picture. It's okay for, oh God, what beautiful nails you have. Oh, your two nails are beautiful. But we don't have the full. You follow with me. So, there's the one about Leonard. Let's find, let's find some. Some others be right. You don't like this one here? That was this one. A way to be aware. Just to can be away strength in your spirit. Now you're away. You're not like this Christian that just doesn't believe in you know you're away. Hey, what's happening? No, no, no. Something's up with that. No, 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 that better. Oh, I'm coughing every day now. No, 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 no. What's going on? This is happening. No. Awareness. 
awareness. That's risk Pereira. That's why I say it's, it's important, Pereira, that the awareness must be there. It's, the Spirit of God is telling Pereira he's, he's basically playing games. The Holy Spirit of God is saying, it's enough now. Can you see that? Awareness is making you aware. And the dream is not even using harsh language. It is like using beautiful language. Just like, hey, come on now. Stop this nonsense here. It's time to get serious. Can you see that? How is this word? How is this word coming? Yeah, yeah. See the next one next to it? Those that can declare. Sister Alicia, did you declare your God? Did you declare your God? Is there something different about the way you feel now that you've done that? It might be small, but it's not insignificant. You see that? What's the other one? Uh, discover. Familiar, instruct. What does come to give? My gosh. How is this world? How is this one in the highlighted? You saw that? I know you're young, there's no old times you can see. I was the one that highlighted. Ah, subtle. Respect your God. Is this other one here? Skillful. It's not just you like, you know what I'm saying? You dump with the word of God. You can apply skill to your life. Understand what? Now imagine, look at this here, right? Because for sure, 100%, I'm, I know when I'm standing there, myself is not, I'm like, Lord, just one scripture tonight. I'm like, no, man. I mean, myself, I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, no, no. Now, all of this, by the way, I'm supposed to do at home, and I couldn't do it. This I was supposed to sort of like, so in a way, you wouldn't have seen like the background of how uh, the message gets formed, but this is how the message gets formed. What I would do then, I would track as many scriptures as I can on all of this. When I do that, I get a reference point on so many different people in the Bible. And I would go through their lives and say, this one, new day God, you see, this one, and this one, this one, that one, this, this one, this one, this one. You get me? Now we're backing it up with content. Unfortunately, tonight will take too long to do that. And time is already, you know, moving on us. So you'll find now that this word here, exploits. See exploits? Can you see exploits? Yeah? Next to it, there's no like Hebrew number. Which means the translator is trying to imply something to us. But there's no word for it. There's no exploits. Can you see how we put it in? In, uh, in Revelation it says nobody must add to the Bible. So what they do is that they type it in lightly like this. So in his mind, no, 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 I never add. But I'm trying to convey a message to you. And how is he doing that? How is he trying to convey the message? Based on the storyline he puts in exploits. So the other word to consider might be do. What is do and do what? That's a word we can consider. Do you see that? Now, I have never looked at this before, right? But see this one. Oh, my Lord Jesus. <laughs> Is what? Accomplish. Accomplish what? Accomplish, okay. accomplish what? <laughs> what you mean accomplish? Accomplish the will of God. We, we have a detail. Will of God is like, Bro, we have to accomplish what? 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 Hey? What he said to you. Nothing else. Now, when they say exploit it, maybe your mind is like, oh, you forget about what God spoke to you, like exploits. You, you're wondering. And you're thinking of big things. But the big thing is the voice of God. Listen, there's nothing bigger than the voice of God. Because everything comes. 
is from the voice of God. So how can there be anything that's bigger? But if God says to you, just come to church, that is the biggest thing because God said it to you. It means everything because He said it. You heard me? As so it's saying this, that you will accomplish, advance. Now in one Bible, if you've got an Amplified Bible, what the Amplified Bible does in words like this, they put in brackets all these words. They pick out the best ones and they put it there. So you'll find the Bible is thick because they're trying to help us, you see, with definitions. So, those that know their God, how we get that? So what are we going to do tonight, right? This part, yeah, we'll translate it. We're going to translate this part. All right. So, for this word, you know, what is a, a word we can all come to agree on? Which is the best one out of all those? Because we've got to pick one. But the people that can pick one. Discern. You like discern? You like discern? Alright. The people that discern their God shall be shall be what? Come on, remember. I I liked one there. Yes, yeah. yeah, let's try. But the people that discern their God shall lay hold and accomplish. And accomplish. <laughs> Can you see that? Oh, and what? And advance. Can you see that? A point. I was at one week. Because what's happening is that the word will marry with you. The moment you fulfill the word, that you marry with the word, you become one with it. And become. Hey, that's like, yo, oh, that's like deep, right? How's this one? The word that the Lord uh, gave to Eve. Initial bruise is you. Yeshua, <laughs> Yeshua. <laughs> I was in one. They shall lay hold and bruise. Yes, it's, how was that now? Because now it's got reference points. It's like, people are going to be scattering. Devils are going to be running crazy. Left, right, they bruise. You get me? Uh, be busy. Have charge of, have the charge of, commit, they shall deal. Why? You don't know about this one, man! Listen, I did not prepare this message. So we are like, circling here. What deal? Who are you dealing with? Who are you dealing with, Shade? Deal with who? Let's see if you get this one. Deal with who? God. Yeah, you trade. How is it work? Come on, guys. <laughs> In a position, you in a position to make the trade. You're like, yeah, not now. You can make the trade. Yes. Who can make the trade? The ones who discern, lay hold of, they stay on it, they keep this word, they've done their part. Now, what do they do? A trade. How do you accomplish? How do you accomplish? By laying hold. How do you accomplish? Let's see. How do you accomplish? By respecting. How do you accomplish? Do. How's the work? I got you now. How do you accomplish? Do. Preacher one now. I'm each of a preacher mode. How do you accomplish? How do you accomplish, Shade? Don't let me down, Penina. Don't let me down, girl. How do you how do you do it? How do you accomplish? See, I'm leaving Ken because Ken went here. How's the work? I'm still on it. I'm still believing. How do you accomplish? Yeah, you get it, eh? How do you accomplish? How do you. We said it on Sunday. Any other takers? Give us a hint. You know it. You said Thunder. No, you take it. You 
take it now. How do you accomplish? You don't accomplish. Can you accomplish anything? Who, who must accomplish it? Who must do it? Who must do it? How does he get to do it? How does he get to do it? You take it and you give it to him. You trade. You deal. With who? How's that work now? <laughs> you're the preacher one. You know that one? Got you now. Got you. I can go sign for one. I can do a one minute walk. Only stare at people's faces. Stare at their eyes. You know that one? They like this one. Stare at you. Bring the offering basket out. Now bring the offering basket out. Who wants this blessing? I'm mean, bring it out now. Who wants this blessing? You, you want this blessing? You serious about this blessing? <laughs> How's that work? You serious about this blessing? Who serious tonight about this blessing? Yeah, Who serious tonight about this blessing? You know that when Abraham was serious, he made an altar. You know when someone was serious, he made an altar. What did he do? How did he see? How did he seal this covenant? <laughs> Where's your Isaac? Are you prepared? Are you prepared to give up your Isaac tonight? You prepared to lay your Isaac down tonight? Are you prepared to lay Isaac down for the Lord tonight? <laughs> Ooh, Lord, Lord will strike me, I'm telling you. Yeah, but, oh, can you see how easy it is to get into people? Because there comes a moment where there's actually truth. So the Lord allows people to be tested. They leave them. He allows the ministers like, hey, let's see now. Now you are on the path. And now, don't they look at the whole of you? Now you want them to sow for this blessing. Let's sow for this blessing. Now. You see that? So, can you see how the Spirit, because yeah, I mean, this, you know, this is not me. Can you see what I'm talking about? It's not me. Because this is actually a continuation. It's a continuation. It's not something different, something new. Because what happens is that when we open up a revelation, right, there's a level of repetition. But it's the repetition from all different angles. This angle, that angle, that angle. But it's all focusing on one thing. So when we spoke about Hannah, I asked the guys like on, on Sunday because I repeated that message. And I'm not, I'm supposed, to, I'm supposed to talk on this on, on, uh, on Sunday, but something happened and we stayed on this right. So, there was something different about Sunday and Wednesday. Can you remember what it was? Wednesday's message and Sunday's message were very similar, but there were two things that were different. The one was the thunder. You remember, in order for God to thunder down, you've got to bring the thunder to Him and bring the thunder. Alright? And the other one was the battle is the Lord's. Now we know how the battle is the Lord's. Is that we bring it to Him, we make it His battle. But in the absence of us doing anything with God, can He do anything? He can't. So now when we look looking tonight, what this is saying, that the people that know their God, can you see this? These that discern their God, they'll be in this position. You think Hannah got to a place where she knew God? She discerned correctly. Did she discern Belinda? Hannah discerned. That the Lord had done this to her. Once the discernment switched on, the situation changed. Can you see that? So, the exact thing that's taking place here is what happened in the life of Hannah. But it's just been read differently in the book of Daniel. But the way it's read, it's enhancing what God wants to say in your life. And showing us the intention and the seriousness of the Spirit of God with regard to this. Because there was no way 
people are giving here. So I mean, in my mind, I'm like, why, Daniel? You know, I don't know why I'm even. I couldn't, I couldn't see anything, but now we see it. Can you see that? So the end of it is being in a position to deal with God, trade with God, bring God into the battle, let Him fight. Did He do it for Daniel? Of course, yes. So the Spirit of God is showing you, beloved, that the fulfilling of your obedience is not fulfilled until you trade with Him. Can you see that? It's the fullness. So everything else is like a prelude. It's there to get to be in a position where you can say to God, No, Lord, I have fulfilled obedience with you. And I bring this back, back to you. You said to me this. Now fulfill your word. I give this to you, Lord. Can you see that? It's a builder. Can you just do that out of the blue? The Lord gave you a word. He's like, oh, no. Now you see the importance for the testing. It's because you said, but Lord, you gave me a word and all these things came. So and so said that. But I chose to stick with you. I chose to obey your word. You said that I must not go work. You said that this is what I should do. You said that I should go into this area. You said I must do this. You said speedily I must set a date. You following me? Now, Lord, I have obeyed you. Moving my life. Fulfill the thing that you want to do. So you give me that way back to him. You think he's glad we said because it's for, can he do it? Do you know how he's gonna do it? You do you you better do it, Lord. Or else I will <laughs> we start putting a Jonah, I will preach. I will preach. They can have church. I'll suck up their home. They can have church. I church, I'm waiting for the Lord. You follow me, beloved. You get it? So we won't overdo it, right? We leave it. Is it good? Is it right? Is it just yes, sir? I can see you coming to the conclusion of this matter, no? Yeah. So, it says there that but but the people that do know their God. Yeah. So give us some pointers on how we can get to know him. Ah. Uh, because I've got one solid one in my mind. I don't know if there's more, maybe. So Here's the thing, right? Firstly, God will speak to all of us. Every single one of us. Doesn't matter how, doesn't matter if it's a dream or whatever it is, there's some type of obedience. So, the coming in to know Him, you know, is to discern first, like, hey, this is God. You follow Him, so you discern now, hey, this is God, and you treasure it. So, what God does is, based on the person's obedience, he moves forward with them in the relationship. You get me? So when you choose to obey, so let's use your life as an example, right? So in before you came to church, right? You served the Lord, right? You you knew God. In your mind, no, in your mind that time you knew God, convinced you knew God, right? One hundred percent convinced. So you did say that often now you get this knowledge and information, you now say that I didn't know God. But where did it come from? How did it lead to that stage for you to make the conviction that you didn't know Him? So you discern some things. It was by discernment, primarily, yeah? initially by discernment, like, hey, I've been doing this. This way for long, no, 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 no. So, is there a certain better level than how it was before with regard to you? How did it come? 
Think, think carefully how that comes. What? But before meditation, what was there? The ability to obey. Yeah. So you said, okay, yes, God, that's what you want me to do, and I did it. At that stage, you didn't know anything about God, nothing. But what brought it on more than, because did you read the Bible before? Yes. yes, but there was nothing. So what changed this time? It's the meditations. I always do. The obeying of it. The obeying of it. Can you see that? The obedience of it. So, if a person, like the Lord says to him, just find yourself in church, Mr. Malinga. Then Mr. Malinga chooses, no, 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 no. What I will do, I will come to church, but I will listen, I will do meditations. He's doing the exact same thing that you're doing. How come when you sit and talk to him, you say, ah, this guy, he's wasting time. He's doing all of this, but he doesn't know anything. Were the people that read the Bible? They were all in the type of Jesus. Did they meditate? Of course. Did they know the Bible? Of course. Did they know him? No. So what is behind it? So which means the obedience brings us into that space. More than what we actually do. You with me? Must you do the meditation? Yes, but the meditations would like, like for another person, they mustn't like even do meditation. Say, what? No, no, no. Just obey. Because what happens is this, uh, there's this way that God works with. Like first, with a person, you have to start to work with their conscience. So for them, their conscience is just being programmed to know that this is the right thing. Because before it worked that way. You know, some people believe that, you know, in their conscience, their church is messed up. And at times, you can't fault them because of what has happened in churches. So now, you think the Lord's going to tell that person that you know to correct things. What is he going to do? He'll impress upon them to go to a certain place. And go there and hear from my servant. So the more they come, What's happening? That thing about church has been changed. But it needs full circle. It needs a lot of time to be repaired. Once it's repaired, now it's by in. It's okay. Listen to one book of the Bible. But before that, it's hard for some people to even do meditations. It'll be a mess. It'll be a mess. And I wouldn't advise that. What I would advise is just find yourself in a church environment. You can do that by coming to church. If you want to come to church, get like the praise and worship for church and get like the, uh, the messages for church. That will do at that stage more than what meditation to do because that's dealing with the conscience. What meditation is dealing with is what? Stage two. The renewing of the mind. Is the conscience alive now? Conscience is firing on all cylinders. Yeah, now you need something to enhance it. That's when what comes? Meditations. Soon, meditations, you won't want to do them. You know what you need? You need some strength. Where do you get strength from? Prayer time. Can you do four hours prayer time? It'll be like, nah, I'm not gonna, I just, uh, no. Pray, I cannot do four hours. Yeah, half an hour, hour maximum. You feel that way? But the time comes when you do 20 minutes meditation and four hours pray. Because the spirit is balancing things now. And you wake up, you want to do meditations, you want to pray, and you follow the spirit. That's your obedience. Go we'll pray today for five hours. It's your obedience, not everybody else. You do it. Can you see that? And in that way, you get to know God. Make sense? But it comes with obedience first, not sacrifice. Sacrifice would be like, I'm sacrificing my time for the Lord. The Lord told me, for example, maybe the Lord said to me, Lord, I want you to do what? Uh, do music. I said, but Lord, I don't do music. I'm better at this. I must still be something for the Lord. Yeah, 
prayers? Is my obedience? No. I'm sacrificing for you, God. I'm sacrificing, but that's not what I asked you to do. So in that way, my knowledge of God goes down. I become weaker, weaker, I'm dead. You visit me, we can't talk about the Lord. I'm talking about other things. But am I in the world? Yes, but I'm out of it. Make sense? Yeah, the obedience must always be the first thing. You know, there's some guys like in business, old guys, 18 something people. The one guy said, I've never ever made a mistake in business when I'm serving the Lord. He says, The only thing I did with God, believe this, he said, The only thing I did with God, I obeyed everything he said. I obeyed every single thing. You know, sometimes it's hard to obey God. And be honest with you, sometimes I even fail. Like, but sometimes, uh, I go to the studio and I know that, hey, I mustn't tell you anything. But it's so hard for me because you're always around. But I fail that, yeah, I'm like, oh, and I can feel like, yeah, I failed because now I'm not supposed to disclose this. God didn't want me to disclose it. Then the next thing, we're not supposed to listen to one song, we listen to a song. There's this small, I'm saying small areas of my, like, Hey, I'm being a transparent man tonight now. This is a big thing. Oh, we're having fun, we're still having fun. But with me, the call is like, hey, no, no, just, you know why? So the people can get their minds off it. And now, every week, we don't come and say, you saw? New boy? You got a new boy for us. Give us something. You got a new boy for us. Give us something. How? Oh. And in the people's minds, it becomes a pattern. And that's bad. Because human beings, the moment that it happens, they get to a stage of, what's the word, it's unappreciative. So I'll give you an example, I was just like, hey, we're knocking, we're knocking down. I'm, I'm like really hitting now. So at any stage, now don't take this bad because we just touched on it. At any stage, did any one of you beautiful, loving people of the Lord come and say, ah, Raphael, you know what? The music is so beautiful. Ah, we really appreciate all what God is doing through you. Wow! I'm knocking. Oh, it's in the Tell me. Ish. Ish. How's the issue? This is music. you dancing too. We also dancing. Mr. Malenga. Serious moment, like you know, sober up, like you know. You can see that. Why am I saying because of what I said? Because human beings get into this pattern of listen, no matter what it is, it'll be like, oh, yeah, another number, another song, oh, you another one, you another one. Oh, when we get in the city, oh, God, wait, wait. but can you just say, hey, wow. You know what it takes to do one song? So we do the concept, the song's not complete. The guys are there. This man is playing with all his heart and tongue. Right there. There's a time when he says these words to me. Lyrics, please. <laughs> his cell is laughing. Uh, uh, I'm thinking of like, uh, uh, maybe, uh, Something like uh, you, like you know, something like, and I can't sing so I'm like, ooh, the holy God is you, ooh, and I can't sing it, and I'm depending on him to like sing it. Then he says, okay, take the mic quickly, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm thinking of all each other's bad words to me, and the kind of words that I'm like, you are faithful, holy God. Oh, then the guy that one time says to me, 
You are too deep, eh? You are just too deep. And I'm like, I'm doing what the Lord is saying. <laughs> and I want to be straight I'm like, hey, Lord, am I at least gonna, am I not gonna even see? Just give me a voice for one day, even one line. I'll take one line. I was emotional to God. Hey, God gave me, I think, five lines there. <laughs> you know what goes, Mr. B? Remember those five lines? But to go through it in the studio, and you know when you're done, what I do? I come home and I put the earphones on, or I put the speaker on quite loud. And the whole night, Tom, from morning, from the evening till the next morning, I put the instrumental on repeat. Wake up in the morning, I write a little bit. I play it again the next evening, I write a little bit. Hey, it is tough out there. Very, so can you see the what is what's in the background, what's going on? But in the front, when you come to church, you say, Zaga, put Zaga, no, 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 put this, no, 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 put that, no, 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 put that, no, no, no. But it's like you. The back, so I'm not saying like anything against. I know you guys would say that some stage we have to see this fully complete and stuff like that. <laughs> but human beings get into that pattern. Yeah. So my obedience from the Lord was like, no, 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 no. Though what I was supposed to do was for that second, you know, for the second scene, and I tried it with them. You, Candice, like, what's that? What's that? What's that you play? I ran into them and I was, I was driving, I was playing a song by myself. They come in down. Hey, I heard a different sound. Hey, they came on. What's the number? 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 Man, I don't know that. I don't know about this. Da, 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 da. What's the number you play, man? Hey, the number, man. What's the number? Man. Can you see human beings out there? But yes, they have. They have, yeah, I know they have. They have, like, give them that, that, that shake. You know what I they have, they have. Can you have it? Can you have No, can just complain. Can complain. There's can complain. No, I haven't been to the studio. But can the music is there? But I haven't been. I haven't been to the studio. I haven't been. I did David. I saw it. I witnessed it. I did. He came in. He shook my hands. We got to say. Okay, we're done, eh? For the evening. Anything else you want to ask? We're done. Pullers, you're right there. Anything more? You lay hold, eh? You discern. You lay hold. It's the only thing you lay hold of in your life. And you, you trade. You deal with God. Father, we bless you this evening. In Jesus' name, for your revelation and insights into the counsel of who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.